Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Tonight's matchup features two quarterbacks who will be trying to lead their team to victory. It's Trevor Simeon's Broncos going up against Tyrod Taylor's Bills. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. On a gorgeous late summer afternoon, it's time for football from New Era Field in Orchard Park, New York. A few moments ago, to the delight of this Buffalo crowd, it was the Bills racing out of the tunnel as they get set to match up with the Denver Broncos. Hi again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and you know, now more than ever, it's a passing league. We know that, and as Larry hit onto the open, we've got a couple of great passers squaring off here this afternoon. And usually the discussion centers in on how they're going to compete against the opposite defense. But you and I had a nice little chat with one of these guys in this <laughs> game, and they did say, look, I'm always competing against the opposite quarterback. If I play better than he does, I think my team has an advantage. Makes the handshake afterwards a little sweeter, too. The children will groan. It's the final weekend of summer, but we've got the NFL, and we're underway on EA Sports. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. So here come the Bills on offense for the first time, leading them out in his seventh year now out of Virginia Tech, Tyrod Taylor. In his two years as a starting quarterback in Buffalo, he had over 1,100 yards on the ground, so we know that he can scoot. But don't underestimate his right arm either. 37 touchdown passes and just 12 interceptions in those two seasons. Let's go! One, two, now Taylor on first down. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. Quickly now, here's the Buffalo offense. Well, the one thing we do know about Buffalo, they love to run the football. Number one in the NFL in 2016 in rushing yardage. Expect that to continue, but look for an upgrade in the passing game. If they add that, they could be really dangerous. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Here's Taylor, going to throw again. Wide open receiver complete. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opened things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. They go play action here on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. And here's a look at the defense for Denver. And they've kept the core intact from the unit that won Super Bowl 50. Secondary, still a strong suit. Number one against the pass in 2016. They've ranked fourth overall in total defense. So they haven't dropped off at all. They're hoping to get some more consistent play from their offense to get them back to the Super Bowl. And on second and ten now. Now the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. McCoy's got the first down and more. LaShawn McCoy off to the races. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. LaShawn McCoy, 55 yards. And the Bills have taken the early lead. 
You talk about explosion plays. There's one pretty much right out of the gate. And now they get to ride a wave of emotion, momentum, everything. Just as you, just as you described, right out of the gate. Big sprint, touchdown. They're excited. But on the other side, they've got to guard against a major letdown because they hit them right in the gut with that one. And now you start to question yourself a little bit when you give up the touchdown on the opening drive. Steven Hauschka for the point after. And it's 7-0 Buffalo. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And it ends with a LaShawn McCoy touchdown run. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. Cody Latimer now on the return. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They'll be let out by their third-year QB out of Northwestern, Trevor Simeon. What a ride he's been on these last few years. I remember seeing him in high school before he went to Northwestern. Didn't get on the field all that much there. And then got to Denver as a seventh-round pick and ended up starting the season opener in 2016 for the defending Super Bowl champs. Now a carry, it's C.J. Anderson. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. See if they stay on the ground for second down. A shotgun snap for Simeon. And the catch made. This is Emmanuel Sanders. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A good pick up there, a 22. And now a first down following that long game. To throw with Simeon. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Jerry Hughes in there to sack him for a loss of six. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DM. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. Second down, Anderson. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards gets him back near the original line of scrimmage as he'll be left with a third and long. And let's look quickly here at the Denver offense. The team that was consistently in the top five just a few seasons ago, they finished 27th overall in offense in 2016. A combination of uncertain line play and inconsistent quarterback, I think, led to that ranking. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, here's Simeon. 
And that is incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Now the second-year man from Syracuse, Riley Dixon, on to punt. Back deep for the Bills, Brandon Tate. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Now they'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in the seven-zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say when you're running the big-time races. It means they get out to a fast start. They're setting the pace, making the other team chase now. here on first down he's going to float this one deep right side and it drops down incomplete thought he might have had it instead second down So second and ten here. Come on, let's go. One, nine, cut, cut. Taylor to throw again. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It'll be a loss of one. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yarded. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. And the Broncos go to a nickel set on third down. Yeah, they've got an extra DB out there. Taylor. Open man is Holmes. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. That crossing route is so effective when you hit it just right because you get a guy on the move, and then we see the end result there. Nightmare for the defense. They got a guy with a full head of steam. Not only does he catch it, but he picks up additional yardage after it. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Let's go! Brad, 38! Throwing now, Taylor on first down. And nearly picked off there, almost intercepted. Instead, second down. But not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. A 
fake to McCoy. Now it's Taylor. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. It's Chris Harris with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. The Bills now making their way back out onto the field. They forced the punt the last time, got off the field. I'm, I'm sure some of your D coordinators through the years, you, you liked when you heard those words, get off the field. Oh, there's no doubt or maybe about you didn't it. like it when you heard those words. <laughs> it depended on when they were yelling them. But in this situation, absolutely perfect. Get off the field, force a punt, let the offense take over and do their thing, and it resulted in a field goal. Now we'll see if they can do that again. They start the drive with Anderson. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And we take a look at the Bills' defense. This defense has always carried itself with a swagger. And one of the things they take great pride in, rushing the passer. They were sixth against the pass in 2016. Have to show up their run defense, though. Just 29th. That's quite a surprise, considering the athletes they have on that side of the ball. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. First and ten, Simeon. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Holding offense. Now that's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? Ten-yard penalty there on first down, so now first and 20. A play fake to Anderson. It's Simeon. The catch is made. Benny Fowler. And he's brought down after a good game. That one goes for 24 yards. So here we go, first and ten now. Uh, here we go. They run, Anderson, and he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, a big hit. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Now it's the Chiefs all-time leading rusher. It's Jamal Charles on the carry. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game.
And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. They'll run it. Here's Anderson. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Fresh set of downs here. Again, Anderson. And oh, he sheds a tackle. Now he's got some space. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. A first down carry here for Charles. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. Go. I could come right back at them. On second down, Jamal Charles. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. He's gone over 1,000 yards five times in his career, but he's at the 30-year-old mark, and there's a lot of concern about running backs over the age of 30. Five yards or better per carry in each of his first eight seasons. Now past 30, we'll see if that trend can continue. Let's go. From the gun on third, Simeon. And Fowler's got it. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route, and what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing, and they got it done. And this seemingly endless drive continues. From the red zone now, Simeon. That's complete, right around the eight. And oh, a big collision there. He's hit and knocked backward. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Here we go now. Green, 39. They'll run Anderson. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. C.J. Anderson taking it in from four yards out. And the Broncos are an extra point away from tying the football game. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it's C.J. Anderson who tops it off with the touchdown run.
So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Tyrod Taylor now gears up to lead his offense again. And it was his interception on the last drive that wound up leading to a game-tying touchdown. And somehow you can make this a positive, though. You know why? Game tied now. So you're not protecting a lead. So you're not playing that way. You can't go get the lead again. So maybe it loosens him up a little bit and allows him to go ahead and be a little more free in his play. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And all this is taken in one-handed. What a catch. And he's brought down, but not before getting across midfield to the 45. Got to love the catch. I think you got to love the gloves as well. <laughs> yeah, these one-handed catches, that was great. And they're fun. They become a little more ho-hum, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. And I know that it sounds like we're taking credit away from the guys, and we don't mean that at all. They really work hard on this one-handed catch thing. But I think the gloves have to be helping in a big way. So the offense has it first and 10. fight his way forward here for a modest game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. For McCoy, in the last seven years, five of them over 1,000 yards. Underrated in how strong he is through the hole, but the best part of his game, open field, where he makes a whole lot of people miss. In 2016, he was seventh in the league in rushing yardage. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. Seven all is the score. And we're back to upstate New York after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Bills in possession. They've got a second down at five here to start things out. Taylor to throw. Going deep for his tight end, Clay. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Let's go. Brad, 38. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a just big, a big man, big, a huge man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And I didn't know, what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Oh. 
Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And they had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. So the missed 56 yarder, and now the flip side. Good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. All right, here we go. Blue Blue ah. Here's Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Here we go now. Green, 39. 10th carry now for Anderson. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Play fake to Anderson. Now Simeon. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Benny Fowler that time. And now it's second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Charles getting the handoff from Simeon. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. And it's Simeon. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Simeon on second down to the sideline and wow what a catch there he doesn't get a lot but he was able to get the feet down complete only three yards on the catch it's third down 90 catches close to 1100 yards last year for Thomas for most guys that'd be incredible for Thomas those numbers his lowest since 2011 but well, he does have his old offensive coordinator back so I'm sure he's expecting to get back to his former levels of play Now Jamal Charles on third down. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. It's good for a gain of seven, but still a few inches short here with fourth down coming up. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Now Brandon McManus for the Bronco field goal. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. And McManus able to put it through, and they take the lead here now at 10-7. So a little fortunate there, because that one was definitely leaking right. Without a doubt, maybe about the width of a football or so inside that right upright. 
but he got it to go. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They go play action with Taylor. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Shaquille Barrett coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. McCoy fighting room at the 30 and cuts out right sideline and all the way down to the 42 it's a big run there by McCoy 41 yards on the ground throw on first down with Taylor it's complete to his tight end Charles Clay and he'll get it down on the play to the 37 a good pickup of six there on first down that throw has to be a quarterback's dream doesn't it big tight end curling in the middle of the field so it's great sight lines for him and when they show their numbers back to the quarterback when they sit down right there that should be pitch and catch Now Taylor to throw on second down. And that is incomplete here. He was trying to get it to Andre Holmes that time. Third down here. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. And now it's a third and four situation for the offense. They go play action now. Taylor. He's got his man on the crossing route. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Let's go! Grand 38! Grand 38! A first carry for Patrick DeMarco. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Patrick DeMarco. A six-yard touchdown run, and the Bills have taken the lead.
Well, they weren't messing around. First and goal, they don't do anything fancy. They just go to the fullback right away. I like how you phrase that because oftentimes they come back to the fullback when it's late in the down and distance count, right? In this case, first down, let's go get it right now. And he got it six points on the board. A drive that time of six plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll probably wish he'd reconsidered here. It will cost him 10 yards as he's down at the 15. Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these team special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light theory. Green light means go. Red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. the run with Anderson and he'll lose yardage here back to the 15 that's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down yeah that was a safety that came through and made the play but there's no doubt in my mind he hits like a linebacker and we see a lot of that in today's NFL don't we and that time we do indeed a big hit for a loss And he finds enough of an opening to get this one back up to his 20. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. On third down, that's Charles. And a short pick up here as he'll get up to about the 22-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. But this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stuffed them for almost no gain. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. And now out come the Bills. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a bead on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action, and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. On first and ten, it's Taylor. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. 
Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Now Taylor throwing again. He'll set up the screen to McCoy. Look at the spin. Balance. 16 yards there, and the Bills have a first down. He's so multi-talented, isn't he? He can catch the ball, not just on screens, as we saw there. Get him out into open field. He makes big-time plays. Had 50 catches a year ago. Yeah, and even 50. That was the most he's had since 2013. Now Taylor looking for Tate, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons, and this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. That's sort of a second quarter to forget for him. Now two picks in this frame. Almost as if the first one that he threw, he couldn't shake, couldn't get it out of his head. He ends up throwing a second one as a result. Compounds the mistake a little bit. Yeah, you got to be able to forget, compartmentalize, whatever you want to call it, and move on. He hasn't been able to do so here in the second. Demarius Thomas gets set to go again on offense. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us, but sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far just a single catch in this game, and they'll start this drive with very good field position. After the interception, here's Simeon. Looking for Sanders, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the rookie from LSU, Tredavious White. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. This is such a good read defensively. They know that this offense is going to try to get the ball to their playmaker in space. So what do they do? They crowd him and send bodies at him. And this one winds up being intercepted. Tyrod Taylor now gears up to lead his offense again. They've sort of epitomized balance. I mean, he's thrown the ball pretty well. They've run the ball well. Got to be pretty happy over on that sideline. Takes a lot of pressure off, doesn't it? As much as those guys back there want to throw the ball around and be the focal point, when you're able to run it well and hold the defense back from their pass rush, it allows you to throw it as well as we're seeing so far in this game. Yeah, now they'll be looking to add to their lead here in the second quarter. After the interception, here's Taylor. Over the middle, it's Holmes. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Let's go! One, nine. One, nine. On second down, Taylor. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Here we go! Brian 38! Brian 38! On third and one, it's Taylor. And he's got his man. It's the tight end play. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Taylor to his big tight end clay for the Buffalo first. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. 
is getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. Now a first down carry here for McCoy. He'll be stopped shy of the 45 despite a great move. A gain of three, second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Second down, here's Taylor. And Matthews over the middle with the ground. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back to Buffalo after this. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On first down, it's Taylor. Quick throw, that's complete on the inside slam. And he's brought down. The Mills passing game, getting him down the field. They've got another first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Now Taylor on first down, and he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. We love talking about bloodlines in the NFL, and Zay Jones fits that category perfectly. The rookie at East Carolina, his father Robert was a linebacker in the league, and his uncle Jeff Blake, a quarterback in the NFL as well. And Zay, 399 catches at East Carolina, a D1 record. throw again and Jones has it over the middle and now we won't see a play on first down we're going to get a timeout instead as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half and we're back the offense had a chance to talk things over and we'll see what they come up with here on this next play Taylor on first down. Man open right side. It's the tight end play. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Charles Clay, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Bills will add on to their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and carry it into the second half. Hauschka now for the extra point. It's good, and it's 21-10. That time, a nine-play drive, and it ends in a Buffalo touchdown.
Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Another drive getting ready to start here for Demarius Thomas. They've got to find a way to get him more involved in this game plan. Down here in the second quarter, he doesn't even have a catch. And don't think they're not hearing about it in the huddle and on the sidelines. And we often think of wide receivers at times being disruptive. It's just that they know their talents and they know the type of plays they can make and they can make big ones. They want the ball to help their team. Yeah, you got to think he's going to want the ball more. One target, no catches. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Second down now after the pass completion. Let's go. From the gun, here's Sevian. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Off of play action. Simeon. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Denver. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. <laughs> so possession goes over here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Tyrod Taylor now gears up to lead his offense again. He's been in a pretty good group. They actually have more yards on the ground than through the air, but both have been good, pretty balanced. And have we ever met a coach when we've talked to him before a game that hasn't mentioned wanting to be balanced? No, because then you've got both sides hitting the defense. They don't know what to expect, right? Really helps your play calling because now you're in a position where you're confident in either one, either aspect of the game. Dial it up and let it go. And so far, that's allowed them to lead. Absolutely. Have the lead here in the second quarter. They'll start the drive with a carry by McCoy. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. So while the offense has had a big day, no one on that side of the ball is excited about seeing a loss like that. Their goal, to make every play positive. And when you have a bad one like that, your next goal is to not let it spiral into more. So we've reached halftime here in Orchard Park with the Bills taking the lead into the break. As we are off to Orlando now to check in with Larry Ridley. He's standing by with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Bills are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Broncos just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Bills opening up on offense. McCoy's got great blocking here, and this run goes for a touchdown as they get out to a 7-0 lead. 
Fields with the ball midway through one. Here the defense will come up with the pick. Harris is reading the play and comes away with it, ending the drive. Now following the interception, Anderson's going to shift out to the right side, and he'll take this four yards for the score. Third and four from the 37. Broncos tied up at seven. Taylor has got the completion here, sticking with the same drive, and he'll be tackled at the six-yard line. Hand off and run goes up the middle, and he'd go in for the six-yard touchdown. Offense now with the shot after the interception. Here the defense will come up with the pick. Whiteson's happy to come away with the pick and end the drive. Offense on the field now after the pick. Clay's got nobody around him on the catch, and it ends up working for a touchdown. The Bills go up by 11. So that'll do it from Orlando. Let's get you back up to Buffalo with Brandon and Charles. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And a little dangerous there, almost a penalty, but it does get into the end zone before going over the sideline for a touchback. Here comes the Broncos' offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. The third quarter starts with a run from Anderson. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Calling a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now Anderson. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Anderson and he went nowhere well he went backwards back to the 33 that's gonna go as a loss of two and it'll be second down but these guys are gonna chop into that deficit they got to do a much better job in the run game caught behind the line of scrimmage no yardage would be found Offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. On the counter, it's Charles. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. The more football I watch, 
the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half, things haven't worked so well in the first go around. They want to throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it. And they've run it well here to start the second half. On first down, it's Charles again. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. What's that, five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. A play fake to Anderson. It's Simeon. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Sack back at about the 43-yard line. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback, right in the face of him, puts him down. Simeon in need of something big following that sack, facing third and long. All right, here we go. Out of the gun, Simeon. Now Simeon stripped. He lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted spotted at the 14-yard line. So here's the Bills offense. Now they get ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. They'll start on the ground with McCoy. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And third quarter here, you've got the lead. This is where that strong run game can really benefit you. Stayed in bounds there, kept the clock going. I like all the points you just made there. And if you throw the football and it's incomplete, now you've stopped the clock and you've helped out the guys on the other side of the ball. So keep it in the hands of those runners. Keep moving it. Keep grinding clock. Taylor will throw. The left side completion to Jones. Give him 18 on that one as the Bills are going to have a first down. Zay Jones, a second-round pick from East Carolina. Some thought could have been a first-round pick from East Carolina. High-volume guy at East Carolina. I mean, the big-time catch, 158 of them in 2016. And he's an NFL legacy. His father, a longtime linebacker in the league. one for about four up to the 40. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. 
And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. A fake to McCoy. Now it's Taylor. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. Jordan Matthews, the one he was looking for. And it's third down. A little too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. The Bills on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and six. They'll run it now out of the gun. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? Here's Colton Schmidt now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And coming out now, the Broncos. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. First down, Simeon. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Another tote here for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Anderson, and he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Well, he was stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. The Broncos on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This will be third and six. They'll keep it on the ground, this time with Charles. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. And yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. the toes and that's going to be a first down well done give them 14 yards there and a Denver first down if you're running out route it's likely you end up near the sideline and what did we just see there the toe tap. you got it the benefits of practice toe tapping foot dragging picking it up and making sure it was a catch first down and 10 now for the offensive group Oh, what a juke into space. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Offense. 
So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. fake here on first down and on the catch right side this is Sanders and all the way home for a Bronco score Emmanuel Sanders 63 yards and the Broncos draw a bit closer great corner out there not only able to catch it turn it upfield and get into the end zone it usually involves a little bit of an extra move doesn't it you've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner boy that was well executed And they will line up now for the two-point try. Hey, hey, right. Watch there you go now. Three, Three, ah! A shotgun snap for Simeon. And he's got it. So the try for two successful. And with it, they're back within a field goal. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call, and he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion, and now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. Now McManus on to kick this one off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Bills offense coming out, ready to take over. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football, because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing, but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. They'll throw on first down with Taylor. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Brandon Marshall coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Taylor going to hand this one off to McCoy. And he roams across the 20 to the 24-yard line. It's a gain of seven on the ground, but they'll be faced with third and long. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. The Bills on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and 11. Let's go! Brand 98! From the gun, it's Taylor. It's caught. Jones. Defenders giving chase, but I don't think they're going to get there. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. A big play there. 76 yards, and the Bills will extend their lead. As
As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed limits <laughs> out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Now, how should attack on the extra point? Then his guys will take a 10 point lead. The drive there only spanning three plays, and it culminates in a Bills touchdown. now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's we'll see what they decide to do. here on first down. And Green with a catch left side. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Final minute now of the third quarter. Let's go! On first and ten, Simeon. Oh, that was dangerous. Throw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief no doubt on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Second down now after the incompletion. Here's Simeon. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. The Broncos on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and ten. Green, 39. Green, 39. On 
on the draw. Simeon gives to Charles. And yeah, not much doing. He'll get this only up to about the 36. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game, and while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Buffalo. It's the Broncos trailing, but they do have possession of the football as we begin quarter number four. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he's on to punt for Denver. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. comes Zay Jones with the rest of his offense as they take the field. They might want to mix something up defensively because he's been shredding them a bit, hasn't he? That he has, and even with all the changes that you know are going on on the defensive side of the ball, he's still finding ways to get open, finding the right spots, and the delivery's been pretty good, too. He's over 100 yards, has the one touchdown score to this point. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. Here's McCoy. And he'll get him a little bit of breathing room across the five to the six-yard line. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around a training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around <laughs> campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Second down following the run. Now Taylor, left side, caught by Matthews. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Tenth carry now for McCoy. Takes this one up past the 20 after he's able to make a man miss. Seven yards on the pick up there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll go again to McCoy. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves his sticks. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Now a handoff here to his running back. 
And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Wide open receiver complete. Give him 18 on that one as the Bills are going to have a first down. Well, a clear running situation. Try to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit them over the top. defense tired of seeing him run the football on this D-line probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. They go play action with Taylor. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. And how about this? It's the other Brandon Marshall that picks it off. That is the play they needed in a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. No doubt about it. They did what they had to do to give themselves a chance to get back into the game. They turned it over to the offense. They are now in charge. Now they need to execute. The Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this uh, drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his <laughs> fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. After the interception, here's Simeon. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. C.J. Anderson, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Back to the air, Simeon on second down. Over the middle this time to Fowler. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. 18 big yards on that one and a Denver first. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed-out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route-running savvy. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. Right, here we go. Blue Blue 
They run. Anderson. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. A gain of three, second down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. On second down, Anderson. And he will force his way forward for a yard or two, but I have a good feeling this will be coming back. Hold on. Offense. So some holding over on the left Still side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot, but they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Tough spot here, third and 18, following back-to-back -back running plays that went in the wrong direction. Now Simeon escapes the set, but in the end, the pressure too great, and he goes down. Marcel Darius coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So on now is Brandon McManus. He has hit from as far away as 57, but that was in Denver. And quite a bit of pizza in this box. It's a 53-yard attempt. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice. An ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. So it's an empty possession, and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon. So apparently... Neither guy is immune. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And with three interceptions thrown already, we'll see. Do they, do they rely more on the ground game here? They may have to change things offensively to try and settle things down, not just for the guy throwing the ball, but for the rest of the offensive unit because his confidence has to be shaken a little bit. And you just wonder, is the backup going to start to warm up a little bit over on the sideline? They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. 16 yards there, and the Bills have a first down. As many games as the two of us do, I would hope that one day we'll be able to solve this riddle. Why is it on a hot day that one team has more trouble with the heat than another, and especially when you can't stop a guy running the ball? You know it's September in the booth, though, when you and I have both removed our coats, and those were gone in the first quarter. <laughs> they were gone in the first quarter, and what we're watching now is a defense mentally giving in and sagging a little bit because they haven't been able to stop it. And they'll keep on the ground with McCoy. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. 
That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And it'll bring up a second and 13. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. On second down, here's Taylor. Left side here, caught by Clay. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little route, tackle him inbounds. Okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. The Bills on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. Here it's third and three. Right, let's go. Right, 38. Right, 38. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball. You often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. Matthews the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Third down, Taylor. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. They go now to McCoy. He's seen a ton of action this afternoon. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Bill's football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Touchdown of the game. And the Bills will add on to their lead. 
Well, it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now, but I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two-score game. You're inside of two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. Can't give up anything cheap and easy. That could put you in some jeopardy. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out up. of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Simeon on first down. That incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. All right, all right, all right. All right, here we go. Green, 39! Green, 39! On second and 10, Simeon. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Fowler. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. That catch good for five. It's third down. From the gun on third, Simeon. He's going to let it fly. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Try it here. He's back to throw. And this is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Bills are going to take over in excellent field position. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. come the Bills and that last drive was very very balanced pretty methodical you think they go that route again I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something I'm going to continue and I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do but the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays looks like a run turn into a play action and throw one deep and a great spot to start this drive from here This is McCoy. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now 
I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Again, it's McCoy. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the pickup, and that is going to set up a third and one. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Bills on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Well, I know at points of this when you wanted to close your eyes because of all the points that were being put on the scoreboard, you're a defensive guy, but it was a fun little track meet, wasn't it? It was, and you know the people who really enjoyed this game? They're the ones that like going to batting practice at the Major League Baseball <laughs> parks, right? Seeing the 14-11 to 11 game, that sort of deal, that's right up their alley with what we saw in this one. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Bills are victorious as we say so long from Buffalo.